very loud. It will be fine. But, um, oh, it's so lovely to be here. Um, I've my first visit to Emmanuel Church, and it's been really welcoming. It's been really wonderful to, to worship with you this morning and to feel God's presence um, in this place. So, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, so, we're going to be looking at Acts this morning. Um, I think this is the start of your Acts series. And we're going to be looking at Acts 1, um, verses 1 to 11. So first of all, I will just read that to you, so we, uh, we all know where, where we're at. So I'll give you a chance to find that on your phone or in your Bible, if you're like me, still very much paper-based, you know, whatever is best for you, you know, to put the words on, on the screen. So. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit, the apostles he had chosen, I'm going to get this a little bit closer, because I'm not, no, just because I've not got my glasses on, so. <laughs> um, right, I'll go again. So, until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. I really like that bit, many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, because I am very poor. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so um, just thinking about kind of um, Acts as a book and the author, Luke, and I feel like Luke is one of those people who seems to be good at everything. So he's written this book of Acts and he wrote one of the Gospels, the Gospel of Luke, and actually if you read the commentaries it says like he's linguistically amazing. His historical accounts are just perfect. He uses like languages from these different cultures that he's talking about. And so he's this amazingly linguistic and he's amazing at his history. He's this theologian and on top of all of that He's a doctor. So you're just like, oh. And actually, it made me, uh, it reminded me of a book that I got for my daughter. So this is one of these fiction books, but written by a Christian. So you feel like you're kind of sneakily getting it in there. So my, my daughter is 12. And what I read about this lady on the back of the book, you know, this lady is a trauma surgeon to, uh, who's writing these books, which are a real successful kind of range of books. 
but she's also um, a home she homeschools her kids. So yeah, so I feel like Luke is like one of those people who's just kind of extraordinary in lots of ways. And um, he's written this book, um, Acts, which is it's a really important book in the New Testament because it kind of bridges from the Gospels to the letters that we see. And it, and it just kind of gives us context of what it is to be a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit. It gives us, it lets us, it helps us understand what is written in the letters that come after. And it's just a really important book for us to understand what it is to be a church that is um, intimate with Jesus, who is passionate about the Holy Spirit, who sees the Holy Spirit um, working in power. And there's this, um, this great quote, I think, um, by John Stott. And this quote talks about how actually um, Acts is a continuation of Jesus' work. So we see the beginning of Jesus' work in the Gospels, the beginning of his ministry. But actually, this is continued in the book of Acts. So it says, Luke's first two verses are therefore extremely significant. It is no exaggeration to say that they set Christianity apart from all other religions. These regard their founder as having completed his ministry during his lifetime. Luke says Jesus only began his. And we know that, don't we? We know that Jesus is alive, that he is very active in his church, in our lives. Um, so yeah, so that, that's really wonderful. So when we're looking at the book of Acts, we're looking at the continued ministry of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, so, um, I'm going to be focusing today on um, this promise that Jesus gives his disciples, Jesus' promise. And I'm going to look at three aspects of that promise. Um, but it, when I was thinking about promises, I just really like, I love Christmas, just generally. But I love thinking about um, how um, God's prophecies in the Old Testament are fulfilled in the New Testament. And we see that characteristic of God throughout the Bible, that he keeps his promises, that he can be trusted, that he is faithful. And I, um, Tom, I made this advent calendar for Tom, which isn't this one. This is one that was not made by me. But it looks kind of like this, slightly more homemade. And um, in every day, I've written on one, I've got little bits of cards, and on one side is an Old Testament prophecy, and on the other side of the card is uh, the fulfillment of that prophecy in the New Testament. So every day it's kind of a reminder of God's faithfulness, how we see that God points towards Jesus, that he has a plan and a purpose, and that he does fulfill his plans and purposes, that he is trustworthy and faithful. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to look at three aspects of this promise that Jesus gives his disciples. First, that the Holy Spirit will come in power. Um, that the disciples will know continued intimacy with Jesus. It says, you will be my witnesses. And the gospel will spread throughout the world. So if we just look back at our passage, I'll just read that, that verse 8 again to us from our reading. And it says, But ye will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So, first of all, the Holy Spirit will come in power. So we see that in two parts of this passage. So in verses four and five, it, Jesus instructs the disciples to stay in Jerusalem you will get, and he says, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you um, have heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And later it says, but in verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. 
So there's this promise, isn't there, that the Holy Spirit will come. But actually, the disciples are instructed to wait for that. They're instructed to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. That is, that is critical to this promise, that they need the power of the Holy Spirit for this, for this promise of Jesus to be seen and worked out. And I just absolutely love testimonies about when you see people's lives and hear about people's lives transformed by the Holy Spirit. That complete transformation that happens um, through God's grace. And you might have watched some Alpha videos, you might have been on um, an Alpha course, and one of the testimonies, so you might recognise this guy, is from Shane Taylor. And he has got a really powerful testimony. And every time I watch the video of him giving his testimony, I get a little bit tearful because it is, it's just really wonderful. Um, and so I'm going to tell you it, but it's not going to be anywhere near as good. So I advise that you go and look it up if you're interested. But um, he was a prisoner. He, he was in prison. He'd done lots, lots of really awful things. He was a, part of a gang. He was seen as one of the most dangerous prisoners in the prison. He was spending long periods of time in isolation in one of the prisons. He was moved around prisons a lot because of these problems and he stabbed a guard in one of these prisons. Like he was really like, sounds like quite a scary man. But by God's grace, he found himself on an Alpha course. And on that Alpha course, he met with the Holy Spirit and his life was completely transformed. And actually, it says his behavior just completely changed overnight. And people could see tangibly God's grace and God's goodness working in his life. And within a year, he was released. And then he ended up going to these prisons where he'd been a complete like nightmare for these prison officers and everyone. And then um, running out for courses. So how wonderful is that? What a complete transformation. Um, so yeah, and actually, um, in this book, um, which is a very good book by Terry Virgo, and if you've not heard of him, he kind of kick-started New Frontiers, um, and he talks about how there is this complete transformation in the disciples through the power of the Holy Spirit coming on them. So I'm just going to read you a little extract from this book, and it should hopefully yeah, it should come up. Thank you. Um, so it says, many have suggested that Acts 1, verse 8, this promise that we're talking about, provides the key to the book of Acts, namely, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Frightened disciples were going to be transformed. Reluctant witnesses shut away in an upper room were about to be empowered, inspired, and energized. God came upon them in extraordinary power, making them hardly recognisable from their previous state. Trembling Peter, for instance, who had completely denied any association with Jesus of Nazareth when questioned by onlookers, is now almost unrecognisably different. Now the Jewish leaders take note of his phenomenal boldness and are baffled as to how he and other unlearned disciples can speak with such awesome authority. How wonderful and how necessary the Holy Spirit is. How necessary the Holy Spirit was to that early church to see um, that the church being spread all across the world. And actually, um, when we try and do stuff in our own um, power, when we try and do things for God, but not through his power, not seeking for him to equip us, actually, it, we're, we're wasting our time. Because to, to be in line with God, to be in line with the Holy Spirit, we, we, we need the Holy Spirit's power in our lives. Um, so there's just this real necessity in this promise that actually we need God's Holy Spirit in our lives to see God working and to fulfill God's purposes in our lives. So next, um, continued intimacy with Jesus. Um, so in this passage, we kind of, in the passage we're looking at, we kind of see that in a couple of ways. First of all, um, it, we talked about that Jesus is beginning his ministry. So there's that kind of promise that Jesus will be continuing 
his ministry in the church. And then in verse 8, it talks about how, um, how we will be his witnesses, you will be my witnesses um, throughout the world. But actually, we see more of that if you look like further in the Bible. So in Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, it says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And this is to keep it. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we can know that knowledge that Jesus will be with us. We can know continued intimacy with Jesus. Um, and actually, that continued in intimacy comes through the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. So there's, there's like several passages, but if you look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Because you are his son, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, as a father. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can know that intimacy with the Son, with Jesus, who looks to the Father. What a beautiful picture of the Trinity there, with God working. And um, what's really kind of interesting, I think, in this passage is that this kind of tension that we see. We, we know that we will have continued intimacy with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. But we also see at the end of this passage that there's a promise of Jesus' return, that Jesus will come back. And so if we just read that to us again, verses 10 to 11 in our Acts passage. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the, the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So there's that promise that Jesus will return. There's that promise that Jesus will come and establish his kingdom on earth. So we've got this knowledge that we can see God moving. We can see the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, in the lives of people around us. And, and through that, we can know intimacy with Jesus. But actually, Jesus hasn't returned yet. He hasn't fully established his kingdom on earth. So we kind of live in this in-between of the kingdom of God, being here, being with us, and seeing God moving, and seeing amazing things happening, but also in the knowledge that God, that Jesus hasn't returned. And there's this kind of, this tension that we live in, this, this time of waiting that we still live in. Um, and actually, as a Christian, we know that, that the Bible says it's often not easy. There's often really difficult times. We often go through um, real kind of trials and difficulties. And if you just kind of keep reading through the back of Acts, we see a lot of that. Um, and actually, I'm sure you, you've seen that here in this church. And I know we've experienced that also in our church. So um, just to share a little bit about, about us. So we've got... Um, the former pastor of our church, um, Dave Newman, he recently, he passed away and he had been poorly for a very long time and it was time for him to go, to go and be with Jesus. But I, I, actually, he lived an awful lot longer than anyone that would have expected him to by, by God's grace. And, but actually, a lot of people prayed that he would be completely healed. And we prayed with faith and a lot of, there was a lot of prayer in our church, but, but that didn't happen, that, that, that didn't happen. But actually, um, at the same time, we also see, have seen amazing miracles happen in our church. And actually, really recently, um, there was a group of ladies, we have a group of ladies who pray regularly, like weekly, and they decided to pray for people who had hearing problems. Um, so there was a few people in church that had hearing problems. So they prayed for them, and at the time they were praying, Mike, who was just who is a, a man in our church who's really involved in community outreach, like no joke, everyone in Chesterfield knows him. Like he's really well known. Like yeah. Anyway, so he he was just going about, and suddenly he had worn a hearing aid for quite a while. His hearing completely restored. 
absolutely no hearing aids anymore. What, what, a, what a wonderful, wonderful thing that happened. Um, and what a wonderful testimony. How, yeah, it was really, really exciting. But actually, they prayed for lots of people, and not everyone's hearing was restored, but Mike's hearing was restored. And how great to see the Holy Spirit working like that in his life. So we live in this kind of tension between, between God, we've seen God working, knowing the intimacy of Jesus, but also knowing that God's kingdom isn't fully established yet on this earth. But actually, in that, in that, um, those difficult times, we, we can know intimacy with Jesus. We can draw close. God uses those difficult times for us to build our faith. And yeah, we can, even when, it, in the, when times are good and when times are difficult, we can be assured that we can know that intimacy with Jesus. Um, so next of all, the gospel will spread throughout the world. And this gospel is this good news of Jesus, this good news we have that actually Jesus died for us. He took the weight of sin. He um, defeated death. He rose again. And we can know him in intimate relationship with him. And um, in this promise, I just love, like, Jesus' absolute confidence that this is gonna this is gonna work out. So let me just say read it again. Um, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. How like how confident he is. And these disciples must have been like, oh my goodness me. Like we've only just kind of lived around here and now you're saying with absolute confidence we're gonna go to the ends of the earth. And also, like, there's no kind of, I feel like when I say this, there's no kind of a few clauses in, if this happens or, you know, like, but there's no kind of ifs or buts. There's no, um, like, maybe this will, this will only happen if this happens. Like, Jesus is definite. This will happen. God's will will be accomplished. And um, the gospel will spread throughout the world by the power of the Holy Spirit working in the lives of these guys. So how amazing that is. And this idea that, that Jesus gives direction, he has purposes for us, he has plans for us, that he will accomplish, um, is just a really wonderful thing to think about on our journey with Christ, in our, on our journey with God. And um, it reminded me of, as a family, of prophecy we received. And um, so when um, we only had two children, we now have four children, um, we were at um, like a Christian festival. And there was um, a church, there was a church speaking, and it was the King's Arms, which is, um, who we didn't know at the time, but it's Simon Holly's church, which is one, Simon Holly's one of the catalysts leaders and they in that church they have a school of ministry so he's come with all of these people from the school of ministry so loads of people and these 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 this like group were going around and prophesying for people in the congregation and actually and this this guy came over to us and he said i feel like i've got a word for you and he looked really nervous and he's like i feel like i'm saying that you're going to a place beginning with me I've got the job, he's got the job sorted, he's got the school sorted, and he's got the house sorted. And I just kind of looked at it, I was like, well, like, that is absolutely amazing, because we are actually thinking of moving to Birmingham. Um, so Tom had just applied, he felt like God was calling him into being a church leader, he was a teacher at the time, Tom's my husband, and he'd applied um, for, for, to go to Bible college in Birmingham. So we were waiting to hear about that, and so not long after this, this, this guy gave us this prophecy, Tom um, had confirmation that he was going to go, so that was great. Um, and then we had to kind of apply, we had to um, sort out a house, so some funding came with going, but it wasn't a lot of funding. So we went for a two bed flat, and at the time we lived in a two bed house, we had two kids, it was less than a three bed flat, we were like, this is the way forward. 
Now, after we applied for the tumor plant, I became pregnant with twins. So we were then in a situation where I was pregnant with twins and we were moving to a two-bed flat. So we were like, well, actually, we don't have a lot of money, and this is, you know, it'll work out, and maybe we'll move if we need to annoy everyone too much, so they'll fill up braiders. But anyway, so we sold our house, um, and we rang up, and we said, uh, is the two-bed flat ready for us to move into? And they said, actually, it's not. We're really sorry. Um, we actually do have a free bed detached house, which usually the lecturers would stay in, but we've got a spare one. But we realised you didn't ask for a two-bed flat, so we'll give it to you for the same price. If you want it, go on. Like, hmm. Yes, so we would definitely want it. So we ended up with this, like, really cushy deal, this free bed detached house with, and that was such a blessing with twin babies because it turns out they cry a lot. So I think everyone was happy with that situation. <laughs> um, so yes, and then after that, um, I had to get, we had to get our eldest into school. So Frank, it was just starting school and um, we, we got in this school through, but it was three miles away and in Birmingham, Three miles is quite a long way to try and travel on a on morning. So uh, we were like, it just doesn't feel right. And so we said, no, we'll just wait for something else to come up. And then nothing came up. Oh. And then on the day she was meant to go and start school, we got a phone call. And a Christian school close by said, I don't know if Frankie's found a place yet, but would she like to come to us? And we were like, oh, yes. And actually, they were like, we're not actually started. It's an inset day today, so she can start tomorrow with everyone else. Um, so, you know what? Like, I would like to say, we held on to that prophecy, and there was no worry in any of those situations, because we knew that God had it all sorted. But actually, at each point in, those, in that kind of time scale, we were like, oh, no, what's going to happen? But, like, God was faithful. And it's just really exciting to see God moving and God working and um, so yeah so we, we can be confident that God has, has plans for us that he um, will direct us that he will meet with us and actually that his plans and purposes for our lives will be accomplished he is able um, and it's through his power that we are able to see that happen so um, we have these three points, which we've got. Um, we see it, and we see them working out throughout the Book of Acts, which I'm sure you guys are going to see in this series. That the Holy Spirit will come in power. That we can know this continued intimacy with Jesus, and the gospel will spread throughout the world. So these are promises, not only for the disciples. These are also promises for us now, like in our walk with Jesus. We. We can see the Holy Spirit come in power in our own lives and the lives of people around us. And we can know intimacy with Jesus. And we can see the good news of Jesus spread around the world. And that might be in Sheffield, and that might be in Chesterfield, or it might be wherever God sends us, wherever God calls us. How wonderful that is, that that promise is just as applicable to us now in this room as it was to those disciples when Jesus gave it to them. So what does that mean for us? Well, we've got, first of all, God calls us to align ourselves with him, not the other way around. And actually, there's quite a lot of waiting seems to happen. And actually, there's, there's something in that, isn't it? To, to go in God's strength and not our strength. And actually, that we, that this, the Holy Spirit coming into our lives is a necessity. It's needed for us to see God working <laughs> in amazing ways and fulfilling His His plans and prophet and His plans in our lives. Also, the gospel means good news, and it is good news. It's really good news through what Jesus did on the cross, through through dying for us, through rising again through us um, being able to be in relationship with him and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have this continued intimacy with God now and for eternity. 
And actually, God wants us to share that news. He wants it to spread throughout this, this city. He wants it to spread throughout this country. He wants it to spread throughout the world. But also, God meets us in the waiting. And we have these two, this waiting for the Holy Spirit to come, these 10 days of waiting. We also have this waiting for Jesus to return, where God's kingdom, we see, um, we see God working, we see um, part, like God's kingdom active, and we see um, the power of God moving, but we know that actually God has, Jesus hasn't come back. He ha- God's kingdom isn't fully established for us here on earth yet. So I'd just like to give us a bit of a chance to pray, pray about that. And there's three things that I'd like us to, to pray for. I don't know if this if this sits with you, if these are anything that like you that you would really like prayer for at the moment. But I'm gonna pray about us having a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray about having greater intimacy with Jesus. And I'd also like to pray for direction in our lives, where where God wants us, his leading. And so if it's okay, if I can invite you guys up, and if people would like to stand, and if it's helpful to kind of put your hands out, I don't know, whatever, but just to kind of receive what God has for you. Um, 